Sissy, can you hear me? Anyone, Bridget? Yes. Okay, that's fine. So today we are going to cover IS. Um, IS uh, IAS twenty three, which is our borrowing costs. Okay. Uh, so what is happening here? We know that in terms of uh, is it IS IS sixteen property plan equipment. You capitalize all um, for a specific asset, maybe asset A. You capitalize all costs that are directly attributable to um, bringing that asset into conditions as intended by by management. So those costs will include uh, the acquisition cost. Maybe the quoted price was twenty million, so that is the acquisition costs. Then. We, o we are also including any import duties, import duties, import duties. We are also including future costs, like uh, dismantling costs, that is in terms of IS-16. Then another leg is what we call borrowing costs. Why do we have to capitalize borrowing costs? Because um, they are uh, directly incurred in um, bringing uh, the asset into conditions um, that are intended by management. Okay, so uh, the, the capitalization of borrowing cost is now guided by IAS. We have a specific standard, which is IAS 23 borrowing costs. Okay, so generally what are they, what are borrowing costs? We are saying, um, when you borrow funds in order to finance maybe the construction of your building, you incur costs like interest, like uh, brokerage costs, like uh, all those costs that are related to uh, borrowing funds. That's what we call borrowing costs. It's not only limited to, 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 to interest, but in most cases, you'll find that will be uh, concerned with interest mostly. Okay, so let's say you want to uh, build your your house, um, you are a trader and you want to build um, like a, a, a commercial building or whatever, a building. So what you do is you don't have money. So you want to build your asset A, but you actually don't have money. So there are two options. Uh, the first option, if you don't have money, you have to actually borrow um, a loan that we call a specific loan. A specific loan. Okay, so that loan is specifically taken to finance the construction of asset A. In other cases, you might have actually present uh, a, a pool of funds that you can actually just use to finance the construction of asset A. So that one we call it general pool of funds. Okay, so that one we call it, uh, we say you have a general pool of funds. So these are options for beginners, we don't normally cover uh, this general pool of funds. So for part twos, we only cover spe a specific loan. Then for part fours, we only cover general loans. Okay, so in the first hour, we are going to cover accounting for uh, borrowing costs for a specific loan. Then the second hour, we are going to touch base on uh, the, um, the general pool. How you can account for a general pool of funds. Okay. So uh, we are saying we only capitalize borrowing costs when they are incurred in, uh, in the construction or acquisition of, um, of a qualifying asset. So if you borrow uh, uh, some funds to buy maybe, let's say, a, a motor vehicle, you can't capitalize that borrowing cost because you can only uh, capitalize borrowing cost when it is incurred in acquisition or construction of a qualifying asset. So the question is, what is a qualifying asset? Um, 
Okay. So a qualifying asset is an asset that will take a substantial period of time to actually, so that it is ready for its intended use. That's the basic definition of a qualifying asset. It will take time like a building. It will take time, uh, the building will take time to be ready for its, uh, of its, uh, for its intended use. Like, you know, NAST is constructing those, um, what do we call it, those hostels. So they've been constructing those hostels maybe. It's now even, I'm not sure about the specific dates, but maybe uh, it's now even more than two years. So that's a qualifying asset. So we only capitalize borrowing costs when they are related to the acquisition or construction of a qualifying asset. So we said uh, the definition of a qualifying asset, we say it is one which needs a substantial amount of time to get ready for use. This means it can't be anything that is available for use when you buy it, like a motor vehicle. I gave an example of a motor vehicle. Uh, so so what, are the, uh, what are the examples of qualifying asset? We have um, maybe investment properties. Uh, sometimes we might have intangibles or a building under construction or a building. Uh, we have a list of uh, qualifying assets, but the basic definition is that it should take a substantial amount of time for it to be ready for its intended use or for its um, sale. Okay, that is a qualifying asset. So, as a refresher, we said the basic idea behind capitalization of uh, borrowing cost, we are saying because borrowing costs are directly attributable to the acquisition, or construction or production of a qualifying asset. Um, so it should form part of the cost of the asset because we know that the cost that we are going to recognize for a specific asset, it will include the acquisition cost and any cost that is directly attributable to bringing that asset to conditions uh, that is intended by management for its use. Okay, so borrowing cost is actually one of those costs that are directly attributable to the acquisition or construction or production of an asset. That's why we have to capitalize them. But the manner in which we are going to capitalize them, it is prescribed by um, IAS 23, which is a borrowing cost. Okay, so where do we start? We said, let's say you are... Uh, you want to build your asset, we said there are two options. Either you can use existing funds uh, that you have borrowed long time ago, or you can actually use um, a specific loan. Okay, so these are the two scenarios. You can use your current borrowings. Let's say you, you actually have uh, already maybe um, uh, two general loans. You just took those loans maybe last year or, or this year in January. So you can use the, 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 the process from those uh, current borrowings or you can use uh, the process from, uh, you can get a specific loan. So we said for uh, juniors, for part twos, we only end here. We only end on option number two. Then for those that are in part fours, we continue to uh, the current borrowings. Okay. Uh, so what do you do when you get a loan, a specific loan? How, how, how do you know uh, the amount of uh, interest to capitalize and not to capitalize? So uh, what happens is, um, the first thing that you do is you calculate the interest paid on this, that specific loan. Let's say you took 10 million at 10% per annum. So it will be 10% of the 2 million. Then multiply by months. If uh, maybe we took a loan in, 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 in July, we just multiply by 5 over 12 or 6 over 12. That's interest to, to, to calculate the, the, the interest on that specific loan. Then number two, you calculate any interest received. Maybe you actually took the interest on 1 July. Uh, we took the loan on 1 July for 10 million, but now you are only going to start expending or incurring expenditure on the building or on that qualifying asset in August, uh, let's say September. 
that's when you start incurring the expenditures. Okay, so what you can do, you can say, uh, I'm going to maybe invest uh, the 10 million for the whole of July and for the whole of August. So when you invest the 10 million, you will get, um, you will get uh, interest income. Maybe you got interest income of 10,000. Now just say 100,000. That is interest income from the investment of this 10 million. Okay. Uh, then let's say this 10 million, the interest rate is 10%. So the interest on the 10 million will be 10% of the 10 million. 10% uh, of 10 million, that will be 1 million. That is the interest expense that we need to capitalize. But we can only capitalize this 1 million after deducting uh, the interest income that you got from investing the process from that loan. So that means you are not going to capitalize the whole 10 million, but rather we are going to capitalize 900,000. That is step number two. Uh, step number three, add the net of these two to cost of the asset. So the amount that you are going to capitalize is 900,000. Okay, we'll do some examples to emphasize the, um, the matter. Okay, so the question is, when do we start to capitalize borrowing costs? Do we just say we have a qualifying asset under construction and we get a loan, we start to capitalize? Maybe it will, you can get the loan first, then maybe the construction, the activities, the active um, activities, maybe they will begin at some point in time, maybe in August. So the question is, where do you start to capitalize borrowing costs? So there are three conditions that should be satisfied before starting the capital in borrowing costs. Borrowing costs. Okay. So uh, these are the conditions. So the question is, when should we start adding the interest to the cost of the asset? When should we start to capitalize borrowing costs? So we are saying capitalization starts when all three of the following conditions are met. So it should meet all the three before you start thinking about capitalizing borrowing cost. So the first condition is the expenditure begin, begins for the asset. So you're actually incurring, maybe it's a building A. So you, you, you want to, uh, to construct building A, and now you are actually make buying the materials, uh, paying for the labor. So you, the, expenditure, the expenditure for that asset is actually being incurred. That is the first um, condition. The second condition is borrowing cost begin on the loan. So that means the second condition, you, you should actually ha uh, uh, be having uh, the, the, the loan, like the specific loan, you actually, you actually took the loan. So that means you are actually incurring the interest expense. So that is condition number two. We say borrowing costs begin on the loan. You can only start to incur borrowing costs when you have actually taken the loan. So that is condition number two. Condition number three, activities begin on, the, uh, on building the asset, e.g. plans um, down up, getting planning ETC. Maybe now we are talking about activities, maybe the, the, the planning activities so that you, you can get started on the construction of your building. So the, these are the three conditions that should be met before you actually think about capitalizing borrowing costs. So we said expenditure are being paid, borrowing costs are being paid, and lastly, the activities, um, there is, a, um, there is um, we have active uh, personnel under the ground, maybe they are planning or they are actually doing the, the, the actual construction of the asset. So the activities begin, the borrowing costs are being paid, the expenditure are being paid. If one of these criteria is not met, that means you are not going to capitalize borrowing costs. Okay, maybe we, are, we have actually incurred some expenditure, we bought some materials, and uh, we already recruited some stuff, and we are actually incurring borrowing costs. We've actually taken the loan, but there is no activity on the ground, or we there are no even that we don't have any even plans. We are not even planning anything. We have incurred uh, the expenditure made for the material, but uh, the borrowing costs are being incurred. But this one, we don't have any activities that is happening on the ground. 
we cannot borrow, we cannot um, capitalize borrowing costs. So the question, some some people they can argue that if we are incurring expenditure on the opposition of metro, it means some plans are actually actually happening, isn't? You can't just uh, buy material from Norway. It means some planning has already begun. So maybe they will say uh, the third criteria is not uh, necessary. But in terms of the standard. Uh, that will be thinking in other terms. If you are thinking about that, to say, okay, if we are incurring expenditure, that means the activities actually has uh, have begun. You are thinking in other terms. But in terms of the standard, you have to cite the three criteria. Expenditures being incurred, borrowing costs are being incurred, and activities on the building are happening. Okay, those are the three. You have to know this. Okay, uh, then... Uh, we talked about what are borrowing costs in general. We said um, it's actually any cost that an entity in case in connection with the borrowing of funds. It includes interest expense calculator using the effective rate. You have to be very cautious of this one. You can be given two rates to use the effective rate. Always use the effective rate. Okay. Another thing, it can also include finance charges in respect of finance leases. Okay. Uh, this is IAS uh, 16. We're not going to cover that one, but borrowing cost is not only limited to interest. That is what you should know. Okay, so the question is, uh, when should we, do we have, maybe there is interruption like there was COVID in 2020 in March, there was, the first lockdown was in March. Maybe we're actually doing the construction. Let's just give, um, the example of that was of those hostels that are being built by alongside that road. We say we have been uh, inconvenienced by COVID-19 and we are stopping the construction of the asset for two months or three months or even uh, six months. So are we going to continue capitalizing borrowing costs? That is the question that is always uh, that is always uh, always asked to say when should we uh, suspend? Do we have a, uh, some uh, situation where we it's necessary that we should suspend the capital scene of borrowing cost? And when we are in, during uh, in in that period, what happens to the borrowing cost? If you are suspending the capital scene of borrowing cost, so what is happening to that expense? Okay, so the standard is it in terms of, if you go to uh, AS 23, is in paragraph 22, it said, uh, you should only suspend capitalization of borrowing costs when the activities on the ground stops for an extended period. Uh, extended period, we are just talking about uh, quite a long time, but this one is subjective. Uh, two months might be a long time to someone uh, uh, three months might be a long time or someone would say even a year is not a long time to me but the standard just says uh, if borrowing cost stops for an extended period okay so what will be happening when you uh, suspend the capitalization of borrowing cost what will be happening to the borrowing cost or the expense or the interest in that period you will be expensing the borrowing cost you will be charging them true profit or loss that that's what happens okay but maybe the delay or the stoppage of the activities was um, um, was actually necessary was a like maybe we have to uh, stop temporarily maybe so that the foundation um, you know what they do after building the foundation they can say we are going to stop for um, a month so that uh, the foundation can dry up. So that one is a, necessary, is a necessary part of the construction process. So in that case, you don't stop the capitalization, you continue capitalization of borrowing costs. Okay, so you have to uh, do some assessment before you stop the, the, um, the, 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 the capitalization uh, and uh, you have to look closely on the scenario. We'll do some scenarios so that you can see how, as a manager, you can do the judgment to say, ah, this one is a necessary part of the construction. This one, 
is um, is 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 an ex is is an interruption for an extended period of time. Okay, but the guidance in the standard says if the activity stops for an extended period, that's the guideline. That's the guidance in the standard. Okay. So that was the temporary suspension of capitalist uh, capitalist volume cost. Another scenario is when should we stop forever capitalization of volume cost? So we only stop uh, capitalization of volume cost when the um, asset is substantially complete. When we have completed all the activities on the asset uh, is complete, that's when we stop capitalization of borrowing costs. So we have two, we discussed two scenarios. We discussed when should we suspend capitalization of borrowing cost. Then we also discussed when should we stop um, uh, uh, capitalization of borrowing cost. We have to know this. We have to sing this. We have to dream this. Okay, we have this, we have a scenario here. I think that that's it about borrowing costs in in summary. So let's try to apply uh, the concept on this question. Okay, so the question is on one October. So we have the first date here. Uh, Bashko borrowed six million for a term of one year. exclusively to finance the construction of a new piece of production equipment. So this one is a specific, so we have a specific loan. Specifically taken to, 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 specifically taken to finance the construction of the production equipment. Okay, so on 1 October, this debt borrowing cost starts to be incurred. So the first condition is met. Uh, we are told that the interest rate on the loan is 6% and is payable on maturity of the loan. Then second, we are told that the construction commenced on 1 September 2001, but no construction took place between 1 December to 31 uh, January due to employees taking industrial action. Okay, so we have this date. This date we are told that um, that's when we, we, we started construction. So we are assuming that the two, the remaining two criteria are met on 1 November because we can't start construction when we are not incurring any expenditure. So we assume that the two uh, conditions we, uh, were met on this date. Which two conditions? We said expenditure are being incurred and there is activities the activities going on on the ground. So those are the two uh, criteria that were remaining. The first was met on 1 October when we said we borrowed the funds. So that means borrowing costs are being paid. So that means we're going to start capitalization on this date because that's when all the criteria are met. Then we have a scenario here where we are saying from 1 December, to 31 January, this is approximately two months. Uh, there was no construction, that means there was no activity. So that means one criteria is not met in that period. Okay, so during these two months, there was no construction taking place due to uh, employees taking industrial action. Okay, so the construction is, has been suspended for an, an, an extended period of time, two months, and the cause is the industrial action. Some, they argue that when the suspension is, be, is it was caused by uh, those conditions that are within management control, that's when we stop capitalization. But that guidance is not in the standard that's how they try to apply the standard to say extended period, but that guidance is not specifically in the standard. But uh, you can actually cite it, but um, it's not in the standard. The standards say when the, uh, the active construction or the active um, uh, whatever that are, uh, they are doing there uh, is, is suspended for an extended period of time. That's when you stop, you suspend capitalization. Okay, so in this case, we are going to suspend capitalization for these two months, December and January. 
The asset was available for use on 3rd September 2002, having a construction cost of 6 million. So it looks like our year is starting on 1 October and ending at 3rd September next year. So it started on 1 October 2001, then the year is ending at 3rd September 2001. So the question is, what is the carrying amount of the production equipment in Bashko Statement of Financial Position? Is it 3rd September 2002? So we have this option. So let's um, calculate this. So what we are going to do is we are going to say, okay, at the construction, uh, let me look for somewhere nice to write. Okay. Okay, so we have these important dates here. Uh, the first date is 1 October. 1 October 2001. We say borrowing costs are being incurred. So it's one uh, criteria met. Then we have this date, which is um, 1 November. 1 November. 2001 again uh, the two the other two criteria are met two other criteria met okay so that means we're going to start capital chain on 1 November okay uh, so let's calculate like this so we are going to say November which is one month then December we are suspending because there was no active um, construction taking place okay and then we are going to suspend for November, for, de for December and January. Then we start uh, February up to September. Okay. So if we say February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, that means it's our main months. Uh, let me just admit that this person, who is it? Okay, so we are saying from uh, December, we say uh, uh, from uh, February, we say February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. That's uh, eight months. So we have eight months plus um, the first month, which was uh, October. So we said we have October, then we suspended for, we should have November, uh, uh, when 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 did, when did we start? We start on one November, so we have November. We should have December uh, and January, but we said we are not going to capitalize during these two periods. So we capitalize for November, but we are not capitalizing for these two months, and then we will continue capitalizing in February uh, up to September. So this from Feb from from Feb to. Um, let me try to write something nice. From Feb to September, we have eight months. Then we add the eight months to November to November when we started um, when we started the the, the capital of, of borrowing cost. Okay. So how many months do we have? We have eight plus one, so we have nine months of active development. So we are going to capitalize borrowing cost for nine months. So what is the percentage? We are told that the percentage is uh, 6%. So we are going to say 6% multiply by our amount that we borrowed. We borrowed how much? It was 6 million. Okay. So 6 million, then multiply by 9 over 12. So we are going to um, uh, only capitalize borrowing cost for those months. Okay. So if we come here, if we say, okay, so we are going to say is equal to our 6 million multiplied by um, our 6%, then we say multiplied by our 9 over 12, 9 over 12, our answer will be 
So this is the borrowing cost that we are going to capitalize. The borrowing cost to capitalize. Okay. Then we are also told that uh, the expenditure that we incurred in, to in total for that asset uh, was how much? We are told that it was the asset was available use on 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 3rd September 2002, having a construction cost of six million. So our the expenditure construction cost is six million. Okay, so that means in total, how much do we have? So in total, we have six. Uh, this will be the carrying amount at um, 3rd September. 2002. So this is how you we were supposed to calculate the carrying amount. And we should have that uh, here, which is number B. Okay, so this is how you would calculate um, the, the amount of um, of interest to be capitalized. Okay, so the question is, what happens to the interest that was being incurred in, during these two months, December and January? So what is the amount of the interest? We say 6% multiply by again 6 million, then multiply by 2 over 12. What was happening to that, um, to that interest? Maybe we are going to get, uh, maybe we are going to get uh, 60,000. So what was happening to the 60,000? The 6,000 was being expensed to the profit or loss. How do we do that? We are going to debit interest expense with the 60 million in the profit or loss. Uh, let me do the proper journal. Uh, okay, we calculated it to be 60 million. So what we are going to do for these two months for these two months, you should uh, do the final journal. When we say you are expensing, does we, you do it like this? You are going to debit interest expense, interest expense in the profit or loss account for sixty thousand. Then we are going to credit. Maybe you actually paid for the interest, so we are going to debit the bank, or you can say we are going to debit interest accrual which is a liability to us accrual with the same skist k so that's expensive so the question is when we are capitalizing borrowing costs borrowing costs what sort of journals do we um we calculated here to say we are going to capitalize 20 uh, to 70,000. so another question will be will be uh, requiring you to actually do the journals Okay, so if the question uh, requires you to do the journal, your first journal will be, uh, let's journalize this cost first, the cost that we incurred, the, the actual expenditure that was incurred in the, in the construction of that, um, of that um, asset. So the first thing is to debit uh, the PPE. In this case, it was plant, so it was equipment. So we debit the equipment which is PPE, we debit it with the six, six million, and then we credit, we credit uh, bank, because we actually took a loan, so that, that means we have the money, so we actually paid the six, the six million. So as the first general, you can do the narrations here, but I'm not going to cover the narrations. You can do the narrations here. The second thing is to say we are going to, we, are, we want now to account for the borrowing cost that we capitalize. So the first thing that you do, you don't just capitalize straight. The first thing is to recognize an expense. So the first thing you say, interest uh, expense, or you can say borrowing cost, you put the 270,000, then here, maybe you're actually paying, so it's a bank, or you can say interest um, accrual. You put 
uh, the six, the two seventy thousand. So this one, you say, uh, let me do the, the narrations here because it's very important. You say interest on loan first expensed. That will be your narration. You say interest on loan first expensed. And the second journal, this should be a credit. The second journal that you are going to do, you are now going to transfer the 270 to PPE. So how do you do that? You are going to debit uh, the equipment with the 270. So I don't know it's Please certain noise. Okay, so the, the second journal, you are going to transfer the 270 from the interest expense. So we are going to credit interest expense and we are taking the 270 that we initially debited to that account. So now the, the, the journal the description will be to say uh, capitalization of borrowing costs. Okay, so that will be your 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 journal entries. So when you whenever you are required to do the journal entries, these are the journal entries that you do. Uh, maybe another journal that we left when we took the loan. Obviously, we are going to do this journal. We are going to debit uh, bank because we are receiving money, which is the six million that we took. Then we are going to credit uh, 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 loan for six uh, million thousand, uh, six million, okay. So this is another journal that you, we had uh, omitted. So these are the four journals that you need to do. Like in such a case like this, the case that we have at hand. So those are the journals. When you are required to do the journals, the question might not, might not even ask you to, to do the computation, it will show, it will just say show the all the necessary journals. So you know that you have to calculate first, then you do the journals. And that's how, ex uh, that's exactly um, what I was showing you. Okay, so another example is saying, uh, we have missed cow uh, who borrowed 1 million at 10%. Um, and then, but before he actually used the one million, he invested some of the proceeds and he got interest income of 4,000. So the question is saying, how much interest should be capitalized in this year? Okay, so the first scenario we said, Mr. Cow borrowed one million at 10%. So what's the interest? We are going to say 10%. Apply by 1 million. We don't have any days, so we are not going to quantify, we are not going to, to wait anything. So our um, our interest expense is 100,000. But the same question is saying this uh, Miss Cow uh, got 4 million interest income from investing the excess funds. So as we said, we said. The 40,000 should be used to reduce the interest expense. So that means the amount that we are going to, to capitalize is only 60,000. This is our answer. The question was how much interest should be capitalized in this year? Okay. Uh, another question is saying, when should the capitalization of borrowing costs end? We discussed about this one. We said when the asset is substantially, don't leave this word. When the asset is substantially finished or available for use or complete, that's what the, the standard actually say. So don't ever leave this word. It says when the asset is substantially complete, we stop capitalization of borrowing costs. When do we suspend the borrowing costs? In terms of paragraph 
uh, 22 of this standard is say when the um, active construction stops for an extended period. Okay, so those are very important ways. Okay, let's uh, look closely at this question. This question, I'm going to throw it to the floor. So you are going to tell me when should the capitalization of borrowing costs commence? So obviously we are looking at those uh, those three criteria. We said the first one, borrowing costs are being incurred. The second one, um, the expenditures uh, the expenses uh, expenditures being incurred. The third one, there is active. There are active. Um, uh, we have activities on the ground. Okay, so we are going to read this uh, scenario, and you are going to tell me when should we start the capitalization of borrowing costs. So I'm going to read out this question. You can also read, I believe that you can see the question, and I'm just going to nominate, or if we have volunteers, we can. they can volunteer. Okay, so the question is, I am building a property in Cowdenbeath, Scotland. It's freezing cold, but I love the uh, bagpipes. Anyway, I di digress. Okay, I bought the land a year ago and applied for planning 11 months ago, which I got 10 months ago. I paid for the land eight months ago, so I got a loan then to pay for it. Then disaster struck Scotland. Scotland got even colder and freezing temperatures meant the workers could not get to the building for four wintry weeks, meaning I could start working until seven months ago. So the question is, when should we start capitalization of borrowing costs? We can read the question on your own. Uh, then I'm just going to give you two minutes to read the question. Then you can do, you can, uh, you can. Uh, so I'm going to read the question. Then I'm going to give you two minutes. You read the question. Then I want volunteers. If we don't have volunteers, I'm just going to pick one. Okay. Hello, sir. Hello, Okay, so what is the answer? Any volunteer? <clears throat> I am building a property in Cowdenbeath, Scotland. I bought the land a year ago 
and I applied for planning 11 months ago, which I got 10 months ago. I paid for the land eight months ago, so I got a loan then to pay it. The disaster track and active uh, construction stopped for four weeks. Then I only uh, resumed the construction seven months ago. When should capitalization of borrowing costs commence? So do we have any volunteers? We have the three criteria. The three criteria we say there is active, the activities on the ground. The second is uh, the borrowing costs are being incurred. The third is expenditure is being incurred. So that's when you start. When all the three criteria are met, that when we that that's when we start capitalization on borrowing costs. So the question is, when should we start capitalization on borrowing costs? Anyone? Anyone? Any volunteer? Do I actually have people on the call? Um, Bridget, what do you think? Okay, eight months ago. Yes, 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 yes. Do we have anyone who is disagreeing with Bridget? Sisi, do you think it should be eight months ago? Okay, the answer is correct. So uh, we are saying, okay, we are saying I bought the land a year ago and applied for planning 11 months ago, which I got 10 months ago. So uh, the first criteria was met 11 months ago. Then I, I paid for the land eight months ago the second criteria was paid was was met eight months ago because we are actually incurring expenditure on the asset. Then, before paying for that asset, I used the process that uh, I got from a loan. So that means this third criteria was actually met uh, just before the eight months. So that means uh, all the criteria were met eight months ago. Okay. Uh, that was brilliant. Okay. Um, do we have questions before I summarize uh, the standard? We covered uh, almost everything. Temporal stoppage, um, what are broncos, then when should we start? We covered... Um, Okay, another scenario is this one. Uh, there are scenarios where you actually don't have to capitalize borrowing costs. And there are only two of them. The first one, when the asset is measured at fair value, you don't capitalize borrowing costs. The second one is inventories that are manufactured or produced in large quantities on a a repetitive basis, even if they take a substantial period of time to get ready for use. Okay, so in these two scenarios uh, where you don't have to capitalize borrowing costs, even if the assets in questions are actually, um, what do you call them? Um, even if the assets are, um, what do you call them? I want to, I, I, I want to call them qualifying assets, but they're, they're not qualifying assets. What are they? I'm forgetting. Uh, even we said uh, borrowing cost is 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 capitalized on. Um, is it qualifying asset? I'm losing my mind. Anyone to remind me? We said borrowing costs are, are capitalized on what kind of assets? We said those assets that take substantial period of time to from uh, before their intended use. So what what kind of assets are there, are those? It's qualifying asset, isn't? Ivin. Mean, 
Okay, it's a qualifying asset. I want to think it's a qualifying asset. Is it? Yes, it's a qualifying asset. I don't know why I am losing my mind. Okay, that's fine. Uh, that's it. Then, uh, yeah, it's a qualifying asset. Yeah, the answer is here. Okay. So we talk, discussed about the basis to say just because borrowing costs are directly attributable to the acquisition of uh, an asset. So they are necessary to bring the asset into conditions as intended by management for its use or for itself. So we should capitalize them. And the manner in which we are going to capitalize them is prescribed by IAS 23 borrowing costs. So we said we only uh, capitalize borrowing costs when they are incurred in the acquisition, construction, or production of a qualifying asset. And then we define the qualifying asset. These are the terms that you have to be very careful about. OK. OK, that is it. So let's just summarize borrowing costs before we get to our second section for uh, general loans okay um so the summary for borrowing costs uh, where is it the things that you need to know very well about borrowing costs Uh, so the summary is here. So uh, we said the first one, the definition, you have to know the definitions. The definition that you have to know first is the definition of what is a borrowing cost. Then second, what is the definition of what is a qualifying asset. So we discussed about that one. We said borrowing costs are the interest and other costs incurred by an entity in connection with the borrowing of funds. Okay, so that is the definition. Then uh, we actually have examples, uh, a detailed list of um, borrowing costs. So we say borrowing costs may include interest on bank overdrafts and short-term and long-term borrowings. Uh, number two, amortization of discounts or premiums relating to borrowings. Number three, amortization of ancillary costs incurred in connection with the arrangements of borrowings. Number three, finance charges in respect of finance leases. We discussed this one. Number four, exchange differences arising from foreign currency borrowings to the extent that they are regarded as an adjustment, to the interest costs. Okay, we discussed about the definition. Then the definition of qualifying asset, we say a qualifying asset is an asset that necessarily takes a substantial period of time to get ready for its intended use or sell. Examples, we talked about inventory, we talked about manufacturing plants, then we have power generation facilities, we have intangible assets, then we also talked about investment property. Recognition, we discussed this when we say just because they are directly attributable to the acquisition, construction, and production of the qualifying asset, we should recognize them. Okay, we say borrowing costs that are directly, so we don't always capitalize all borrowing costs. We capitalize borrowing costs that are directly attributable to the acquisition, construction, or production of a qualifying asset. Other borrowing costs are recognized as an expense when incurred. So if we have other borrowing costs that are not directly attributable to the acquisition, construction, production of a qualifying asset, that means we are not going to capitalize those, but rather we are going to uh, expense them. Okay, another thing as a summary, we said when should we commence capitalization of borrowing costs? Okay, so we are now on this paragraph. So we identified three things. The first thing was expenditures for the asset are being incurred. Number two, borrowing costs are being incurred. Number three, 
activities that are necessary to prepare the asset for its intended use or sale are in progress. So those are three criteria. We emphasize uh, on this one. Then second, we said, when should we suspend capitalization of borrowing costs? And we said, during extended periods in which active development is interrupted. So in that instance, we suspend the capitalization borrowing costs. Number two, capitalization ceases when substantially all the activities necessary to prepare the qualifying for asset for its internal use uh, are complete. So don't leave the substantially. This word is very important. The substantially. Okay. So we are saying when the construction of a qualifying asset is completed in parts and each part is capable of being used while construction continues on the other parts. Capitalization of borrowing costs ceases when substantially all the activities necessary to prepare that part for its intended use or sell are complete. Okay, in this scenario, we have um, an asset, maybe a building. We actually have a building here, so we have uh, uh, different, it's a single building, but uh, uh, we have different parts. Okay. So this one is the left wing, this is the middle wing, then this one is another wing. So what they are saying is, um, maybe this wing is actually complete. So we've completed construction on this wing. And we can actually start using the wing, even if these other wings are not yet complete, these ones. So that means we are going to stop capitalization of borrowing costs on this wing but we can continue capitalizing borrowing cost on the other wings. That's what they are trying to mean on that one. Then don't worry about transitional provisions. Then about disclosure, we say you have to disclose the amount of borrowing costs capitalized during the period. Then another thing that you have to disclose is the capitalization rate used. Okay, so do we have questions? Uh, hey, Bridget, do you have a question? Yes, yes, yes. That's that. That is the exact definition of an effective rate. It's a market-related rate. Okay. Uh, and another thing that you have to know: what if we don't have actually the effective rate? What sort of rate are we going to use? So go and research about that one. And uh, tomorrow we are going. That will be the first question. If we if we cannot determine the effective rate, what are we going to use? That is a question to the floor we are going through. If you already know the answer, you can uh, unmute the answer. But if you don't know, you can you you should go and research about that one. Then tomorrow that will be your first question. Okay. Then we have next. What is what's that? Um, Okay, Nick, Nick, well, do you have any questions? Okay, Loveness, do you have any questions? Okay, uh, Tinasha, do you have any questions? Sissy, do you have any questions? Okay, Michelle, do you have any questions?
Okay, that's fine. That means we don't have any questions.